Pillsy. Travis Green wasn't going to say who's playing tomorrow, but Shane Pinto, he's too good of a guy to Phil lie the to the media. Shane Pinto has confirmed that he's good to go tomorrow night. I, I've been telling you this whole episode he's going to play, so I could have told you that. But, yeah, that's great to see. And, uh, oh, man, let's let's get the game counter of Norris, Timmy, and Pinto just click, 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 clicking. Because we know, if anyone knows how good those stats are when those three are together, it's this podcast. So, yeah, 29, 15, and 3 all time when Stutzla, Norris, and Pinto play. And seven points in eight career games against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Shane Pinto is back. On today's show, we'll discuss the upcoming week for the Ottawa Senators that could see them get a big boost in the return of one of their key players. And Travis Green split up Tim Stutzla and Brady Kachuk. Should the two top point producers stay that way or get back together? All that plus a Sens prospect roundup on today's Locked On Sens. This is Brady Kachuk, and you're listening to the Locked On Senators podcast. Your Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, you are locked on to the Ottawa Senators, the only daily podcast covering the Sens. On the outskirts of enemy territory, I'm Ross Levitan, alongside Brandon Piller up in the Blue Mountains. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. You can find the show on social media, at Sense Central on Twitter, LOCKEDON.SENATORS on Instagram. The show is free everywhere you get podcasts, including on YouTube. Today is Monday, November 11th, and Pillsy, it is Remembrance Day, one of the most important ones of the year. Yes, absolutely, and it's important to, you know, take this time to reflect on all the sacrifices, all the things that men and women have done for our country, serving in the military over the years, and I'm certainly thankful and uh, grateful for everything that they've done, because I know that's not something that I could do, and... uh, I really appreciate anyone that has any sort of connection to uh, people in the military. I got to visit Normandy a few years ago. And I mean, just the, the, the thought that all these boats just arrived at the shore on D day and 90% of the first boats never saw it off that beach. The one thing that you can take solace in is the fact that so much footage is available and so many stories are told throughout the years. So I'd encourage everyone to go check out, some documentaries, that sort of thing, and reflect on those who came before us. So thank you, everyone who's in the military, who has been or who has a past for your service. The Ottawa Senators having a moment of silence at the start of practice today to mark the occasion. Pillsy, big game Saturday against the Boston Bruins. The Sens held the Bruins without a shot for almost 25 minutes through the third period, into overtime where Linus Allmark had to go left to right, make a huge save on a one-timer from Elias Lindholm. Brady Kachuk goes down and scores the other way, but we could have been having a very different conversation. Do you see the clip of the back check by Norris and Brady there? They had their wires crossed, had no clue where who was going on the two-on-one. No, I, I actually didn't really look at that, Ross. I've been so enamored by the save and then going back the other way. I mean, may, honestly, spin zone, it might have worked out that they got the wires crossed because they were up uh, pretty high uh, on the ice when that happens. And Allmark kicks it right to Brady. No risk, no fun, eh? Yeah, exactly. Um, but like you were saying, Ross, it's crazy how you look at that game. And if the Sens lose that game, I think we're still taking some gratitude in getting a loser point which is sad but we're certainly not looking at that game the same way as is the case since they won it because if you end up keeping a team like the Boston Bruins especially without a shot for 24 minutes and then you lose that game ooh that is that's that's tough so i'm glad we don't have to have that conversation and instead we can focus on highlighting how good the defensive structure was for the Ottawa Senators, which is something, Ross, I don't know the last time I've said that on this podcast. So Maybe never. That may, honestly, maybe never. Yeah, It's only right. been five years. 
it's only been 1,160 episodes and the defensive structure of this team has not been very good that whole time. But um, yeah, that's a nice one to win. And I'm still riding high off that win. I know we're only seven and seven, but it's a sigh of relief because seven and seven, as opposed to six and eight, is a lot better. Big part of the defensive structure continuing to improve is the emergence of this Thomas Shabbat, Nick Jensen pair. Two of the best skaters on the ice on Saturday's game. And you're looking at Nick Jensen in particular, the skating, the physicality that he was showing out there on Saturday night. Huge boost. Linus Allmark in goal. You're looking for him to build off of a less than busy Saturday night. He's got to be a net for me tomorrow night when the Senators kick off another Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday week. We're getting into a bit of a routine here over the course of the next three weeks. It'll be like that. Well, last week, next week, and this one, you got the Toronto Maple Leafs on the road on Tuesday, the Philadelphia Flyers at home on Thursday, and the Carolina Hurricanes on the road on Saturday night. The Senators enter the week 7-7 seven and seven on the season. What lessons are you hoping the Senators can learn or build off of from the game in Boston? I mean, the lesson for me, Ross, would be now you know you can play this style of game. Uh, like, I think the whole time in the offseason and the story with this team for a while has been, look, they've got the offensive firepower up front, but the defensive structure and the goaltending just has not been good enough to be a kind of stable, consistent team. So they're going to have to win games with a run and gun style of game. But now you can look at what they did up against the Boston Bruins, who sure are having their struggles, but still that's a really good veteran team that knows how to win games. I, I don't think anyone can really argue that. Um, and you were able to shut them down. So you don't need to rely on that run and gun game. And you've got a goalie that sure. Was he spectacular in that game? Not really. But apart from 15 seconds of where the Boston Bruins scored their two goals, he did what he had to do, including a huge save in overtime. So you've got a goalie that can hopefully shut the door when need need be. We've seen Anton Forsberg be able to shut the door when he has to. So you've got two goalies that you hope and are confident can do that. So I think the lesson, Ross, is you don't need to rely on that run and gun game, especially up against the Toronto Maple Leafs team, who that used to be their bread and butter. But now they've got good goaltending, and it seems like they've really kind of evened out their lineup to not rely on the the big four ten million dollar players uh 10 plus million i should say um so you're gonna have to fall back into that good defensive game if you're gonna have a chance up against the leafs in my opinion they will have one of their best defensive forwards back yes. possibly is the quote from travis green shane pinto though did take line rushes on the third line center coming Noah back Gregor. And Michael Amadio. So what kind of boost would that give? I mean, we talked about on Friday with Dean Brown and separately at the end of the show about Shane Pinto's importance on this team. But is it unfair to have immediate expectations of a guy who's missed the last three weeks with injury? Well, Ross, first off, we never were told what the injury was. We never even heard upper body, lower body. So I have no clue what was... Uh, hindering Pinto from playing and how that's affected his practice, his workouts, things like that. No clue. So from that point, I'm not sure. But one thing we do know, Shane Pinto coming off last year where he had a 41 game suspension. When he came back, the big question is, how long is it going to take Pinto to get back in motion here? Is it going to take him a little bit to get his feet going and to get back to the pace of the NHL? Not at all. He jumped in right away and was able to do that. So at least for me, Ross, as long as he's feeling 100% healthy, I don't see any reason why on a third line he can't jump in and be uh, a big part of this team, not only defensively, but offensively as well. It's nice to have him jump in at a time, too, where Michael amadio has got to be feeling some relief after scoring his first yes. goal senator on Saturday. Noah Gregor had a great game using his speed, especially shorthanded. He gets a primary assist on Amadio's goal. So they've yep. got to be a little more confident than they had been potentially earlier on in the season. One interesting note, though, the Senators did loan Zach Ostapchuk back to Belleville. They're trying to accrue as much cap space as possible throughout the season, but they recalled him. So I think it's far from a slam dunk that Shane Pinto's in the lineup tomorrow. Otherwise, mm -hmm. why wouldn't they leave him down? Oh, well, is that 
David Perron insurance? No, because you've already got your 12 forwards otherwise. You have 14 forwards with Perron right now. So then maybe, yeah. maybe it's just insurance. Look, they, they don't have to make a roster move. You can carry a 23-man roster. The Senators are at that right now. And we'll see what happens tomorrow. David Perron, though, being back at practice again, another good sign. My guess, and again, we have no clue what's going on. Just happy to see him back around the teammates. Hope everything's going well at home for Perron. But my guess is he plays the home game on Thursday. Potentially that's the thing where he's got to be close to home, stay nearby. And we saw he didn't travel with the team to Boston, but he has been at the last couple of practices in Ottawa. So maybe that's something to watch for. But I'll quote Travis Green. We're not even thinking about Philadelphia yet. Just the next game, the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Senators at practice today lined up with Josh Norris at center between Brady Kachuk and Ridley Gregg, Tim Stutzla between Claude Giroux and Drake Batherson. We mentioned Shane Pinto with Gregor and Amadio. The fourth line, unchanged. Adam Gaudet with Nick Cousins and Zach McEwen. On the back end, it's Jake Sanderson with Artem Zub. It's Thomas Shabbat with Nick Jensen. And it is Tyler Clevin with Travis Hamanick. Those two are going to be together likely tomorrow as well. Jacob Bernard Docker, a extra at practice. So too are Zach Estapchuk and David Perron. Pilsy. Linus Allmark, Anton Forsberg, you have a preference at who starts in Toronto? I'm with you, Ross. I want it to be Linus Allmark. Uh, I'm looking at Anton Forsberg's game logs. He's played the Leafs nine times. I thought the numbers would have been better, Ross, uh, but he's 2, 4, and and 3 with a 9.05 and a 3.41 uh, goals against. So that's not that great. I'm not sure if Linus Allmark is any better. Not that we're yeah. – do you have his numbers in front of you? 5-3-0 and oh with a 9.36 save percentage and a one point. Or sorry, that's so sad. You know what, that, oh, yeah, you know what that's against? Uh, yeah. That's his numbers against Ottawa. Yeah, I'm looking at it now and I was like, we are not looking at the same numbers because no. Linus Allmark is 4-5-1 and one with an 8.96 and a 3.23. Oh, so not so that we're, we're taking a Jacques Martin uh, approach to this and just playing whoever has a better record up against the team, but... You have to, like, that was a big emotional game for Allmark. Maybe not a big performance for him, but getting that win, getting that big save in overtime, that's got to give him a boost. And we've talked about it. You need to show faith and confidence that Linus Allmark is not a guy, but the guy for your team. And you need to give him the opportunity to play a couple games in a row, especially when there's good momentum. And especially, I mean, this is a guy that's been in the Atlantic division his entire career, Ross. Buffalo, Boston, Ottawa. He he knows how to he knows what's uh at stake up against the Leafs, especially in Toronto. So I think it's a no-brainer. You gotta go Lena Stallmark here. Okay. Travis Green has not disclosed his goaltender for tomorrow. He's chatting with the media right now. And one thing he did note was why he flipped Josh Norris and Tim Stutzla, separating the two players who played the most minutes together this season in Tim Stutzla and Brady. Kachuk, is that a good decision? Is it going to be long-term? We'll have that discussion next. And as we do every Monday, we wrap up the show taking a look at how the Senators' prospects are doing. We've got news on Carter Yakim, Chuck, Gabriel Eliason, and Blake Montgomery. That's coming up next. You're listening to Locked On Senators, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. You heard me right, guys. You can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play $5. Best part is you don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Which players are going off? Which ones aren't? Make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long on prize picks. Download the app and use code LOCKEDONNHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. 
That's code locked on NHL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks, run your game. Today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time. You want last minute tickets? Of course, get them at the lowest prices with Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to your favorite live event even easier. It filters out the fluff and only shows you incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I always like to turn in the all-in pricing on. That feature shows you the total up front, so no surprise fees at checkout. Get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy, and the lowest price guarantee. GameTime will credit you 110% of the difference if you find the same seats in the same section and row for less somewhere else. GameTime has the best ticketing flexible coverage in the ticketing industry, so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with GameTime. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. All right, Billsy, it is another Monday, another hopeful week for the Ottawa Senators. Three Eastern Conference opponents. It all gets started tomorrow against the Atlantic Division's Toronto Maple Leafs. The Leafs starting to find a little bit of rhythm. They've won three games in a row. They're 7-2 and two on home ice, and they have a 9-5-2 and two record on the season. Yeah, the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, this is going to be a good game for the Ottawa Senators as they're banged up, Ross. You're looking at the Toronto Maple Leafs with possibly no Austin Matthews. He was absent at practice today. Max Pacioretty out week to week. Uh, No Yanni Hakampa. And it's going to be interesting to see if the Ottawa Senators can at least take advantage of having a couple guys up front for the Leafs not in the lineup. Yes, and we will have a full game day preview for you tomorrow. It will be an early drop episode, so it'll be ready for you for your commute. My biggest question is what will the lines look like in tomorrow's game? We already talked about what they are at practice today, but Travis Green says the reason he swapped Josh Norris and Tim Stutzla in the lineup was simply for a different look. Now, Travis Green doesn't seem like the kind of guy that's going to open up his coaching strategy book and tell the media about it. But what to you would be the reasoning for keeping those two combos together? Like the the way they are now? Yes, with Norris in between Kachuk and Greg, and then Stutzla in between Giroux and Batherson. Well, I mentioned I thought part of it might have been just to give Timmy a little bit uh, lower ice time with his cyborg guy going on. But uh, now that he's had a little more time to rest and they haven't flipped back to that, that's clearly not the case. Um, I I like it this way, Ross, because I I think Brady and Norris have good chemistry and I like the idea of having like that Brady Norris, Greg line works in so many different ways. You got Greg, he's going to be the honey badger that gets those guys, the puck. You got Josh Norris. He needs to be a shoot first center. Don't even think about it. Just rip that pill. And then you got Brady as a net front presence. So if Josh shoots and doesn't score, there's a rebound or Brady can provide a screen tips, all those kinds of things. I think that line makes a lot of sense. And then you go down to um, having Giroux, Timmy, Batherson. I think no matter what, Timmy needs to have Brady or Giroux on his line to take face offs for him. Still, unfortunately, not anywhere near up to par when it comes to face offs. Tim Stutzla. Um Oh, you're muted. What's he's the got, stat? He, well, maybe that's the big voice trying to mute me from saying he's gotten better in the faceoff dot. He has gotten better considering he only won two of his first 19 on the year. Now he's 31%. I repeat, Tim Sitzla not anywhere near close enough to being as good as he needs to be in the faceoff dot. Oh. Where's do you have Claude Drew handy? Because he, he he's always uh yeah, really Giroux leads the team in face off percentage. He's clicking at uh 59.3 percent. 
yeah, good guy to have with Timmy. And then with Drake, you get a little bit more of that speed, a little bit more of that pop that uh, when he was on a line with Brady and Ridley, you didn't necessarily have. So I think that works out, and it's good to spread the wealth, Ross. You look at Timmy and Brady, this t- team's top two point producers. Sure, when they're on a line together, it's great because usually they can produce points as they have. But I think it's a good idea to spread that around a little bit. So I'm not too upset either way. Like if they went back, I wouldn't have cared that much. If they stayed, I wouldn't have cared that much. But I will say now that talking through it like that, I think this is the proper alignment for this team. Yeah, it's it's okay. I, I still think that I, I'm waiting to try Batherson with Stutzla and Kachuk. I want to see those three play together. They looked good last year when they had some time together. They've only played 12 minutes together this year. They've got one goal for none against, and their goals per are on average, like they're, they're dominant when they're on the ice is what I'm trying to say. But that said, I understand wanting to spread the wealth throughout the top six. I think the Travis Green's reasoning for this is because the Norris, Giroux, and Batherson line had three bad games in a row. Like three games yeah. just below their standard where they couldn't be. They so were good to start. They were great to start. They had yeah. a spark. I think it was that Tampa game, right, where they were put together and, and they looked great from then on. But it just, it tailed off. And that's what coaches are there for, to press the buttons and make changes to try to create sparks throughout the lineup. So the one thing that definitely has worked was getting Ridley Gregg up on the line with uh on, on into a top six role right he started the season as the fourth line center on this team we know they like him at center but to have him up there on the wing and we'll see what happens when david Perron comes back that's the only reasonable player that you'd expect to take him out of the top six but mm-hmm. I, I, who else you think Pinto's gonna come up and play top six no, I don't I don't I don't think you'd take Greg out of there. Like I don't I don't think putting Perron in a top six role to come back is a good idea. So what Perron goes on the third line where Noah Gregor is then and Gregor goes on to a fourth line, but now who are you no. gonna take off that fourth line? I would probably move Amadio down. I like Gregor being on that third line with speed. Uh, Gregor provides a, that shutdown role that will help that fourth line, and then Goddet can be the offensive player on it, and then you still get a bit of grit with Nick Cousins. So if you're doing the math there, that leaves Zach McEwen as the odd man out. Not that I think he, you know, he's a guy that needs to be punished or, or taken out of the lineup because of poor play, nothing like that. I just think every other person you can find a role for that they fulfill that's more needed than Zach McEwen on a night in night out basis. I think it is good to have a guy like Zach McEwen in your lineup and, he, and he's playing better than expectations, but I'm not looking to have him there for 82 games. Yeah. Well, may, uh, to me, I do that on Saturday maybe, but with Philly and Toronto, the next two teams, you might want to have Zach McEwen in the lineup and, and keep things how they yeah. are. Not that we expect Perron to be back, but let us know in the comments. I'm curious what people think, whether Stutzla and Brady should play together or separate. Brady Kachuk this season has played 155 minutes five on five with Tim Stutzla and only 38 without. With them together, they've scored nine goals and they've allowed nine goals, exactly 50%. Now, expected goals, they've they're at a 55%. Kachuk without Timmy is at 55%, and Timmy without Kachuk is at 54.9. So there's not a big drop off without them. So maybe you're spreading this out to just help other players in the lineup. We know Brady just had a monster game on Saturday, eight hits, 12 shots on goal. I saw our friend Murray Pam posted that in the final 25 minutes of the game, Brady had six shots on goal and the Bruins had one. Like that in itself is an unreal stat, but I'm curious to know what the citizens feel about Timmy and Brady. Do you want them together or separate? All I care about is that we have Timmy, Norris, Pinto, down the middle insert whatever wingers you want where let's hope shane pinto is back in time for tomorrow's game against the toronto I'm feeling good about it Ross. maple leafs in his career against toronto pinto's got seven points in eight games so you want him back in the mix as soon as possible some players who are still marinating in the fridge we haven't even thrown them on the grill yet we're letting them simmer get that flavor in there it's Carter Yakumchuk, Gabriel Elias, and Blake Montgomery. And Vladimir Nikitin, <laughs> Sens prospect update, is next. Also, the Belleville Sens are a wagon. You're listening to Locked On Sens, your team, every day.
Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. You guys know FanDuel is the official online sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network, and it's America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So, when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. And make sure you're checking out all the great things that FanDuel has on their website. I'm looking right now. You can get a live 30% profit boost on Monday Night Football. You can get a 50% profit boost on Monday Night Hockey, Calgary up against the LA Kings, and so much more. So check it out today, guys, FanDuel.com. All right, Pilsy, here we are on a victory Monday after the Senators get that 3-2 overtime win in Boston against the Bruins. The Senators 7-7-0 on the season. This team is honestly allergic to loser points. They only had four last year, and they're still sitting on zero so far this season. There's a few other teams in the Eastern Conference, but in terms of the wild card race right now, they're the only team without a single loser point now you want wins so that's the good news but the bad news is the, those losses all being in regulation are adding up and hurting them in the standings the senators are seven and seven and pretty much in the middle of a traffic jam in the wild card race tampa's got 15 points philadelphia's got 12 points and there's about 10 teams right in the middle of all of it and unfortunately, Ross, if you uh, sort the standings into wild card, the two teams ahead of the Ottawa Senators, the New York Islanders and Buffalo Sabres, two teams the Senators just lost to. Yeah, that's tough. Let's stick with the division, though, for no. now, okay? Let's stick that with is the, the division. division. Well, but, no, yeah, those are divisional card. teams, yes, yes. Well, one is. The Islanders are Metro. Yes. You knew sorry. that, though. My you bad. knew that, though. My you bad. knew that. <laughs> Uh, which prospect do you want to start off? I feel like Carter Yakimchuk's always, you know, the most intriguing prospect. And he had a big Friday night, nine shots on goal, two assists. His team gets an overtime win. He assisted on the OT winner. And uh, he finally, on uh, last Monday, got an even strength point because he has been doing all of his work on the power play. Yep, so far, Carter Yakimchuk, 12 games, five goals, eight assists, 13 points. Like the plus minus to boost up a little here, Ross, still sitting at a minus five. He was a minus six last year, but the Calgary Hitman, not exactly a uh, contending team. So that's going to happen, but right. But he just doesn't, he has three points at even strength this year. Yeah. When you're a power play merchant, kind of like Yakumchuk is the plus minus isn't going to get that boost. That's t- That's where I, we need to see him do more at five on five. Yeah, and there's no reason why he can't, right? He's got all the tools. We've seen the skate. Uh, the skating isn't as bad as people think, especially when you're in junior. We've seen the dangles. We've seen the shot. We've seen what he can do. So maybe it's just going to take some time here. And he's thrown a couple big hits, but nothing like Gabriel Eliason with the Barry Colts this weekend. He got into his first and second fights in the OHL. And in both of them, The other guy got the instigating penalty because he goes out there and throws an enormous but clean hit. We tweeted them out at Send Central if you want to go see them. But Pilsy, this guy is nothing short of entertainment. Ross, I'm watching the video right now. (laughs) Yeah, this guy, uh, Send's Prospects, tweeted it out if you guys want to see it. But he is just an absolute mean guy when he gets out on the ice and the hits the fights is incredible i i know i've said it but i gotta get out to a barry colts game uh pretty soon here as that's not too far from me here in collingwood oh it's so good man looking forward to seeing how he develops because like the physical tools are undeniable standing undeniable. six foot seven six eight and and just a, so much mean in his game So we'll see what happens next. He's also got two goals. And by the way, is among the Barry Colts leaders in plus minus this season. He's second behind a Dallas Stars draft pick, Tristan Bertucci. But 
tied for second and plus minus. So for anyone who's just saying he's out there gooning it up, hey, when he's out there, the team's plus eight in his minutes. Um, Speaking of OHL, the Barry Colts have Gabriel Eliason, and now the London Knights officially have Blake Montgomery. We were discussing this after Jeff Merrick posted it last week, and we were waiting for Thursday's ruling that, yes, now you can play in the OHL, WHL, QMJHL, and still get a college NCAA uh, scholarship, and you can play down in the state. So he's still committed to Wisconsin for next year, but Blake Montgomery will be playing the rest of this season at least with the London Knights. Yep, he had his first game. No goals, no assists, a dash one. It's probably going to take him some time to get acclimated there, but I mean, that's that's an exciting move for Blake Mon- Montgomery, and if you have an opportunity to play for the London Knights, that's his brother not a bad did. chance to take, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he was playing top six left wing on the second line. So we'll keep following Blake Montgomery as his season develops. But we got to go all the way overseas for this one, Pilsy. You were following closely. I know you wanted to get out there on a scouting trip. It just didn't work. But Kazakhstan putting in work on the back of Vladimir Nikitin. Yeah, I just missed my flight to Kazakhstan, so I'll have to get it next time. Uh, But yeah, he stopped, or I don't even know if the game was in Kazakhstan. No clue where the game actually was. That's probably why I didn't make it there. Uh, But Nikitin was there, and he stopped 45 of 48 shots. Kazakhstan still not able to get it done as they fall 3-2 to Russia in U-20 action at the Future Cup. Um, Ross, it's going to be awesome to see Nikitin in Ottawa for the World Juniors, and this is a classic tale. Like I feel like Kazakhstan, Latvia, a lot of these kind of um, developing countries in the hockey world are trying to find their place, but they always seem to have good goalies because I bet all these goalies have faced a lot of rubber growing up and uh, he's going to have to get used to having 40 plus shots a night. And I think that's where Nikitin thrives and we'll see how it goes for him uh, and team Kazakhstan moving forward. Not the best start uh to his mhl career ross um as in eight games he's got a 406 goals against 896 save percentage and a three and five record but going from the bchl to the mhl i'm sure that's a big difference uh and i think he's going to be able to turn it around i've got a lot of faith in the keaton as uh if you'll remember he scored a goalie goal with the chilliwack chiefs last season so he's a fun kid we had him on the show and uh we're wishing the best for him yeah completely agree pilsy the belleville senators are Ooh. looking real nice after their win against laval on saturday night 3-2 it was a regulation win they've been in a lot of extra time games i think they're five one and four on the season so far malcolm suban the first star because levy marilinen is now hurt too he left the game on Friday with injury, so Michael Simpson gets called up, and Malcolm Subban gets his first win, I believe, back in Belleville where he played his junior hockey. The game-winning goal goes to Max Gannett, and what a night for both Oscar Pedersen pew, pew, and Stephen Halliday. Halliday gets in his first pro fight at the end of the third period against Logan Mayu, and then, well, not in then, before that, he gets an assist on Xavier yeah, Borgo's sure. game tying goal. So, hey, they were down 2 0 at home midway through the second. Patterson gets things going with his second goal of the season with 58 seconds left in the period. Beautiful goal on a, on a break. And then they get the power play goal to tie it and the game winner. So, good to see down in Belleville that it's the young guys who are getting the production and helping them get some points. Yeah, definitely. That was a great win. And yeah, Halliday held his own in that fight. You love to see that. And Ross, the newest Belleville Senators captain, Garrett Pilon, Peelzy. How about leading the team in points with 12 points, one goal, but 11 assists? So Stephen yeah, sure. Halliday, yeah, the Disher title uh, is being held by the captain for now. Love that. Uh, Pilsy, Travis Green wasn't going to say who's playing tomorrow, but Shane Pinto, he's too good of a guy Filled to lie the to the media. Shane Pinto has confirmed that he's good to go tomorrow night. I, I've been telling you this whole episode he's going to play, so I could have told you that. But, yeah, that's great to see. And, uh, oh, man, let's let's get the game counter of Norris, Timmy, and Pinto just click, 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 clicking. Because we know, if anyone knows how good those stats are when those three are together, 
it's this podcast. So yeah, 29, 15, and three all time when Stutzla, Norris, and Pinto play. And seven points in eight career games against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Shane Pinto is back. All right, Phil, any final thoughts on today's show? No, most of my final thoughts would have been Belleville or prospect related. So we got them all out of there. Uh, I guess for final thoughts, I'll, I'll just uh, say that I hope everyone is taking time today to, to reflect on Remembrance Day, like we said off the top of the show. Absolutely. Well said. And thank you to all who have or do presently serve for our freedom. For Brandon Pillar, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been another edition of the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.